Good morning, church. Now, this is different, isn't it? Um, it's amazing, is it not, uh, how fast our world can change? I mean, who would have thought last Sunday that we would be where we are today? It reminds me of the biblical word about Jesus' return, that it will happen in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. 1 Corinthians 15, 52, and that's what we're preparing for. Uh, we hope and pray that uh, you and your loved ones are well today. We're all in prayer that this public health crisis will, will soon pass and that things can return to normal. And, of course, we're praying for those who are sick and, and for those who may have lost loved ones already to this disease. Well, I'd like to uh, do two things with this broadcast today. First, to update you with a few announcements and things of importance to the church family here at Lancaster. I realize there are several watching that aren't part of our immediate family. Uh, we welcome you as well, uh, but please bear with us as we share a few announcements that are really linked with our family here. Uh, but then also I'd like to uh, do my best to offer you a word from the Word that I hope will challenge and encourage you. So first, uh, a few announcements. Keep in mind that uh, there will be no Wednesday night Bible classes at the building this week. Uh, after this point, the leadership of the church will consult again about how best to proceed in the following week and then we'll communicate that to you. Also, uh, the Singing with the Spirit workshop for this coming weekend, um, the 20th through the 22nd, of course, has been postponed, we hope, just uh, to a little bit later this year. Um, also, for our family here, remember that we're in the process of seeking additional deacons to serve in the congregation here at, at Lancaster. If you would like to nominate men for that, please submit their names to one of the elders. Also, um, just a practical note, obviously the work of the church continues even if we cannot meet in public assembly. Uh, let's all do our best to continue to be good stewards of the money that God has blessed us with. So if you wish, you can mail your contribution to the church address. Or maybe you want to save that up and add it in to what you give the next time we're able to assemble in, in public. And uh, finally, let's all just make an extra effort to be checking in with each other, uh, to check in especially with those who may have special needs during this strange time of isolation. Uh, we have just so many ways these days to do that, even other than face-to-face, -to, -face, to keep in touch. So let's be good stewards of those tools as well. And uh, maybe you know of a need that you cannot meet. Um, please let us know in the church office if there's something like that that maybe we can help with, and we'll do our best to take care of those things. Let's pray together for a moment. 
Our mighty God, we, we bow before you today on this, your day. We want to worship you and, and remember your son. We want to praise your name and give you the glory that you deserve. Please be with us uh, as we struggle through strange times. Uh, bless us and um, take care of us both uh, physically and, and spiritually and help us to be a blessing to others. I thank you, Father, for always hearing us when we call upon you and be with us today as we want to serve you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I've thought a lot about the message that I wanted to bring you today. Um, on the one hand, I don't want to be melodramatic, uh, but on the other, I, I don't want to stick my head in the sand and pretend that everything is normal today, when clearly it is not. Uh, this is an anxious time for many people maybe for all of us to some degree. Uh, I know something about anxiety. Not that I understand it, but some of the most precious people in the world to me deal with anxiety on a regular basis. It, it's a real thing. It's a difficult thing, to say the least. And we've probably not talked about anxiety and related things enough in the church. Um, probably have not brought enough of the Word of God to bear upon it. I know I haven't, and that's, that's my failing. So let me share a few passages, uh, really just by reading them, that speak in some way to all of us as we deal with anxiety in whatever form that, that it presents itself to us or to people that we love. And then uh, I'd like to share one additional passage in just a little bit more depth. So to begin uh, reading from Psalms, uh, the fourth Psalm and the eighth verse, it says there, In peace I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. And then the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah 26, verse 3, You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon you because he trusts in you. And also Isaiah 41 and verse 10, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Then into the New Testament, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7, where Paul wrote, For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. And then, lastly, 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 and 7, where it says this, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. Now, each of those has something I think powerful to say to us during times when we're stressed and anxious and, and confused. All of them point us to the love and power of a God who cares for us more than anybody else in the universe. And, and he has the infinite power to do something about it. I encourage you to, to meditate on those texts. If, you're struggling these days. Now, there's one other passage for today that, as I read it this week, I, I just knew I had to share it. It's another psalm. It's, it's Psalm 91. First, a caution. 
there is a lot in this psalm that can be misunderstood and misapplied. We need to be careful on how we handle it. And, uh, you know, we want to do that with any scripture. But I think particularly this one, you know, we don't want to overstate what it says and uh, make claims that it doesn't make. Having said that, I think as you hear the words of this psalm, you'll quickly hear how true it rings to our situation today and, and what powerful comfort it offers and really what a magnificent God it points us to. So let's just hear the psalm in its entirety and then reflect on it together for a few more minutes. Again, it's the 91st psalm. It says there, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, My refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies at day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you, no plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder. The young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls on me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. This is a song for a person who's in danger, who is under threat, who feels surrounded by enemies. Uh, whether those enemies are physical or spiritual, and, and whether they're weapons of war like arrows or even something like plague or pestilence, we might call it disease. And it's obvious why this song echoes deep within our souls today, isn't it? But of course, the, the song is about a lot more than danger and threat. What it's really about is a God who protects and shelters, who covers us with his wings, who hides us in his great shadow, and who delivers us. A God who is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble, a God who says, do not fear. A God who says, come live with me for a while. A God who answers our cry, who uh, saves us when we call on him. Our true refuge, our strong fortress, our almighty God. This is who we worship today. You might recall a famous poem by Rudyard Kipling. It begins this way. He wrote, 
if you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs. Now, friends in Jesus today, nobody should be better equipped to keep their heads when everybody else is losing theirs than, than those like us who are connected to the Most High God. Those of us who know the Almighty, we truly have resources that can make us islands of calm in the midst of swirling seas. Uh, this should be a time when the world looks at believers in Jesus and asks them for a reason for the hope that lies within them. What an opportune time to show forth what real faith is, what it looks like when it's lived out. But first, we have to believe it, right? You know, we have to be convinced. We need to be confident. And, and we need to claim the promises of passages like Psalm 91 that give us every reason to be bold and courageous in this world, no matter what swirls around us. God has said, I will never leave you and forsake you. So we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? You, you may have heard it said, that all the water in the ocean cannot sink a ship unless it gets inside. That's true. But it's also true that all the trouble in the world cannot harm us unless it gains entry into our hearts. It might surround us. It might threaten us. It might even look bigger and more powerful than us whatever it is, but God is bigger. God is bigger. He is stronger. And he loves us. And he wants the best for us. And he will save us. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because we know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Let's pray. Almighty God, great and holy one, again, we're drawn to you today, seeking shelter and, and confidence in the midst of a storm in our world. We know you love us and you're watching out for us and that if we could just see things from your perspective on eternity shore, we would see how all this is going to work out. Thank you for your love and your promises. Thank you for Jesus, our Savior, who showed us there's a lot more than just this world and that we have great hope. Father, we're asking your blessings on those who are especially struggling today. Maybe they're sick. Um, maybe they're just in fear. Please strengthen them and help us to be a great help in any way we can. 
show us open doors to share good news. And and we pray, Father, that uh, if it's your will, we can soon come back together and and be with one another face to face. We look forward to the day where we can be with you face to face. And thank you for that great blessing. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank you for listening today. Um, let's let's go out today in whatever way we can and bless someone, um, serve someone in the name of the Lord. Let's use the extra time that the Lord is giving us to draw closer to those we love and and to bolster our faith. And let's just keep our heads and steal our hearts and be a strong witness for Jesus right now in our world. Our world needs him more than anything else. God bless you today, and may you live for him faithfully this week.